Welcome to the Power Foods Lifestyle Podcast. I'm Christy Joe, a certified fitness nutrition specialist, personal trainer, and weight loss specialist. I created the Power Foods Lifestyle back in 2012 as I transitioned from binge eater to fitness competitor, and I needed to systematize and strategize my nutrition and mindset approach to reach my goals. Nothing else out there was working for me until the PFL illuminated in my mind. My hope is that you too can become a strategist of your own health using the principles and strategies I share. Head over to powerfoodslifestyle.com to learn more. Today in episode 250, we are talking about cooking low carb, how to make quick, simple meals. I know it can feel super overwhelming when you decide to go low carb, whether it's because you know you have a lot of inflammation in your body, you have a condition of chronic pain that you are going out on the limb and saying, you know, I'm willing to try whatever I can to help me better manage this. Perhaps you have some digestive issues going on. Maybe you have headaches or sleep issues. You just need to try something to get ahead of any symptoms that are manifesting in your body. Sometimes we just know we feel better eating a little bit lower carb. Sometimes we think low carb is the solution because we can't like get the processed refined carbohydrates out of our life. So I want to encourage you to first start there. Like don't just kick out all carbs simply because you feel like if carbs are off limits, then you won't eat the donuts and the Rice Krispies and the cold cereal, etc. It's best to work on first for a lifestyle change, replacing those types of carbs with our power carbs, things like sweet potatoes, red potatoes, lentils, beans, fruit, um, whole grain breads, and so forth. But once you've kind of started to make that a natural lifestyle change and you're used to eating power carbs here and there, that's when if you are having these symptoms, I want you to really dive into the low carb. So let's assume you've already made that decision. This is you, you are ready to go. So I know that it can be tricky because we're all busy. You probably don't want to spend all day in your kitchen, let alone even have time to do that. And maybe you don't have that much experience or love for cooking. And if, if, that's you. I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. I do enjoy cooking. I do enjoy the simplicity of the way I cook. Um, I've never considered myself to be a gourmet chef. I have no desire to make very fancy meals. That's just not the way I grew up. And it's not the way I want to create an unsustainable expectation for myself with my family. I want to be consistent and reliable that I produce healthy meals that are yummy, that are quick, And that sustainability is more important to me than the once a week, lavish, wonderful gourmet meals that just wow everyone. I will probably never get the raving reviews at the party because I don't bring that item, that novelty item that everyone's like, oh my gosh, because that novelty item is probably garbage and garbage ingredients, but consistent and reliable in terms of what people know they want to eat and feel better after eating. And so with that said, I'd love to share with you my process for cooking and I hope this can benefit you too. So three different steps for this. The first one is to know your power foods and make an accessible list. Accessible means it is posted either on your fridge or on a kitchen cabinet. It needs to be visible so that you can refer to it when you need to come up with ideas or when you are doing your grocery list, your meal planning, and so forth. Number two is going to be choosing the meal types from our five S's, soups, stir fries, scrambles, shakes, and salads. And then number three, simple seasoning processes. So I'm going to talk you through this. The first one, know your power foods, make your accessible list. You should know by now, proteins, peas, that this is an anchor to every single meal we eat. Okay, if this is totally new to you, if this is the first episode you have tuned in and found me, I really want you to go back to some of my previous episodes that talk about Power Foods Lifestyle strategy, where to begin, and so forth. You can use the search box over at powerfoodslifestylepodcast.com to find episodes that are going to explain basic PFL before you dive into some of this, because I am going to use a little bit of nuance here. So the peas, proteins, we want to have three to five protein ideas listed down. My top five, I'm just going to literally wing this. This is kind of what I go through every single Sunday. That's when I do my meal planning. That's when I order my click list. It's just, it's a task in my phone for every single Sunday because Monday I go and pick it up sometime between 10 and three whenever it works with my errands and schedule that day because Mondays my errands go out and do stuff day. So those proteins would be eggs, possibly egg whites, liquid egg whites, protein powder. I make sure I'm stocked up on that. If I'm not, I make sure I put in an order to Amazon. Then we've got cottage cheese, chicken usually. We have, we buy beef, 
like when there's a, a cow share and stuff. So we ha always have a really heavy stock of grass-fed beef in the freezer so I don't ever have to buy it from the store and highly recommend you do that. Or Butcher Box is a great place to go as well. Ground turkey and I, I mean those are kind of our top go-tos. Once in a while I'll, I'll change it up. I'll grab some salmon, some tilapia, some pork chops or like a chicken sausage but those aren't every single week's. Then the next category is our veggies, our V. So top ones, I'm always gonna make sure I have like a spring mix or spinach and a dark green like chard or collard greens that I can chop that up. I've recently been getting parsley as well because I really enjoy the flavor of that in my salads. I'm always gonna grab some tomatoes. I'm gonna grab some baby carrots, celery, zucchini, squash, broccoli, cauliflower, kind of those basics. And then if I really like if I'm doing a more in-depth planning, then I could branch outside. But if it's just quick, let's get it done, it's a busy week, then those are kind of my go-to basics. And then we go into the carb category. Well, since we're doing low carb, let's talk about those still, if they're staples, like if you're going to have maybe one carb a day or maybe one and a half, half being a half peak range, that's usually a half cup of fruit. That would be like blueberries, grapefruit, or a small apple. And then if there were another carb, it probably would be beans which I'm into canning right now. So I usually have all sorts of beans canned ready to go and that's easy. But if you don't can, if that's not something you're regularly doing, you can soak them and then put them in the instant pot and cook them and have a nice bowl of beans that you can easily add into recipes. And that's just nice to have done in bulk for the week. But usually I'll have like navy beans, black beans or pinto beans on hand ready to go. Or sweet potatoes or red potatoes. Those are kind of like the most natural go-tos. And isn't that funny? None of the go-to power stuff in that top hierarchy of carbs, it, it contains gluten. So sometimes when we're, we're going low carb, we happen to go gluten-free, not because we're choosing to go gluten-free, just by default, the foods we're choosing, and it just ends up that none of them have gluten. So that's something that's interesting to note, and that can absolutely be helpful in going low carb and helping with inflammation and so forth. So then we have our fats, and this one is really really where you want to make sure you have some diversity, otherwise meals are going to get a little bit boring really quickly. So this is where you have your top three, your olives, your healthy oils, rotate between avocado oil, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, uh, walnut oil, things like that. Uh, and then you have your avocado, of course, and yes, guacamole counts as avocado, as long as it doesn't have any garbage in it. Then we go into our next little tier of power fats. This is our nuts and our seeds. I usually try and have almonds on hand, and then I kind of filter between Brazil nuts or walnuts or, or a seed like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds. So I don't always have all of those stocked. Almonds is always there, and then I kind of rotate between the two and like just add, and then when it runs out, then I'll go get another one and so forth. I just, I, I'm not a big believer in having everything accessible at all times. It's just not practical in my mind. And so each week I just say, okay, what haven't I had in a while? We haven't had pumpkin seeds. Okay, let me go to the bulk bin store and let's get some of those. And so usually for bulk bins, because that's not something I put on my click list, I will usually go pick up my groceries, the, the normal easy stuff, and then I will go to the bulk bins like Winco or Harmons and, and something like that and I'll go get those bulk items. Other fats to use would be making sure that you have, if you're getting, again, your eggs, that's gonna have your yolk, that's gonna be a usable fat. Shredded cheese if you don't need to go dairy free. Sardines is a really good one. Even cream cheese would work. You know, some of those saturated fats, they are still um, power fats. They just need to be used strategically and wisely. So don't shy away from those. So bacon, sausage, those aren't things I buy every week. Maybe once a month, I'll like throw that into the mix and just kind of change things up. But that's not a regular staples. The ones that I said at the beginning are going to be my staple fats. So make your list of those very common power foods, P's, B's, C's, and F's. That should be the bulk of your shopping list, and that's what you're going to use to plan those meals. So now we move on to step number two. This is where you choose your meal types. Now, I don't always stick to my meal plan schedule. It's helpful just to write it out. Sometimes it's as simple as on a 3x5 card. I have a stack of 3x5 cards in my silverware drawer with a pen for this very reason because then I wanna write it down, I shove it in a cupboard like the little seal, and so it just sits there over my stove and, and I can look at it. But maybe it says Monday is a soup. Tuesday might also be a soup, because those are days that I teach and I'm away from home in the evenings. And so I might throw in a soup to make life easier for my husband, or he's fantastic at making stir fries, and so sometimes he will do that. And like what I did last night is I put these items on the counter, so he didn't have to think about what ingredients went into the stir fry, he just made the stir fry. So I put out some beef, it was defrosting, I put out some 
what was it, spiralized zucchini and summer squash that I had previously done from our garden earlier this summer. So those were defrosting and then also some diced broccoli florets that I had done from our, our garden as well. And so those were all ready to go. So those were just on the counter. So there was P and F because ground beef is going to be protein and fat unless it's super, super lean. And if it's super lean, you're honestly not getting the beneficial conjugated linoleic acid, the CLA. That saturated fat is good for you, okay? So <laughs> I'm not saying go and eat that all the time, but our Power of His Lifestyle principle of one to three times a week is wonderful. So we had protein and fat and then our, our vegetables. And then he ended up, I had cooked some brown rice the other day. And so he ended up just putting a little bit that was left over in a container in the fridge. He had dumped that in, used some healthy avocado oil and cooked that all together. And that was ready when I got home at 9.30 and it was so wonderful. And he is just so good with his seasonings. He seasons different than I do. So it's always a little unique. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in step number three. So anyway, soups, stir fries, scrambles, shakes, salad, that these five really help us keep to something simple. A stir fry, like I just described, you choose your protein, you choose your vegetables, you're usually going to cook it in oil. Um, if it's going to be a fat, if it's going to be more of a carb meal, don't do too many carbs because we are trying to stick to low carb. And so perhaps just use the oils or you can have, add avocado on top or some sliced olives or some cheese and bring up that fat content. Scrambles, you're going to make the exact same way as a stir fry. You're just going to add in some egg whites to bring the protein up. You can do that even if there is meat in it already, or maybe that is your source of protein in the stir fry, or I'm sorry, the scramble. Soup, super simple as well. You're going to choose your protein, choose your vegetables, dump those in the crock pot or the instant pot. Um, usually for four servings, four hearty servings of soup, I will do about four cups of water and then two tablespoons of chicken bouillon. And that's kind of the base. I'll talk more about seasonings in a moment, but that's, that's where we go from. And then for low carb with soups, um, you're going to choose coconut milk. That's going to bring up your fat content, or you can put in some olive oil or some avocado oil. You can add full eggs if you want a little bit of kind of like an Asian, like egg drop type soup. You can get the fats up that way, or you can simply add some fats on the side by either adding cheese on top of your soup once it's done. You can have some avocado diced on top of it. Or you can just have a tablespoon of peanut butter as dessert after your PV <laughs> soup. For a salad, pretty simple. You have your, your starter bed of leafy greens. Choose your protein to go on top of it, whether it's browned ground turkey, whether it's shredded chicken breast, whether it's a hamburger patty that's cooked on this side. And then you can put other vegetables on top, of course, like diced celery, diced cucumber, some diced tomato. Um, if you do have arthritis, definitely check into, just Google what nightshades are, and those may be something to test pulling away from after you've gone low carb for a week or two. So things like bell pepper and tomatoes, you'd want to maybe hold off for a little bit and just see if that does help with any flare-ups. And then, of course, you're going to choose a fatty dressing for the topper, and it could be something as simple as an extra virgin olive oil or an avocado oil. I personally think avocado oil is much tastier than olive oil. But you can also look at these two brands that I love, Tessa Mays and Primal Kitchen. These have egg yolks and olive oil in them, which brings up the fat content. You can also Google making your own fattier dressing using full eggs, using a healthy oil, and then season it how, how you will. But you can definitely make your own. Just make sure the fat content is a little bit higher. And that is what gives you those energy nutrients rather than putting rice on top and lentils on top or a bowl of spaghetti on the side or toast with it and so forth. So our final step is to season it. I'm going to actually walk over to my seasoning cupboard because I just want to give you some basics that I highly recommend. I do have a list of seasonings in Power Foods Lifestyle Edition 2 book. But my top everyday using, of course, sea salt, black pepper, garlic powder, onion salt. And then if I'm taking something a little bit sweeter... I'm going to have cinnamon, nutmeg, and vanilla extract. Of course, that's more like on the dessert side, but if I'm doing something a little more of a Thai style, garam masala is one of our favorite spices for stir fries and soups. Curry, ginger, cumin. Cumin goes both ways, both for more oriental type things and then for also Mexican style. So chili powder is a must have for sure. Chili powder, cumin, celery salt I do love in soups. Turmeric is also a really good one to have on hand. And then I just love blends from McCormick. I currently have mesquite, chipotle, and roasted garlic. Roasted garlic and herb. Smokehouse maple. 
And those are the basics of my spice cupboard right now. Chicken bouillon, beef bouillon. It's really tough to find a bouillon without MSG in it. So I, the, the way that my family symptoms and stuff are that I'm trying to work around, we don't have anything that is exacerbated by MSG. So in the small amounts we do use a bouillon with MSG, I don't stress about it. But if you are someone that knows that that's a big trigger for you, perhaps cluster headaches, migraines, and so forth, then yes, you'll want to research and try and find one. Um, maybe look at Trader Joe's, maybe look at Whole Foods, um, or you can go online to Thrive Market. That may be a good place to go. So again, my general rule of thumb in a soup is for four cups of water, I'm going to do two tablespoons of bouillon. I go heavy in my sea salt because if you're eating 90% plus power foods, you need that salt. You need the salt to balance out your electrolytes. So don't shy away from that. Of course, doctors are going to say if you have high blood pressure, they're going to say, yeah, you need to, you need to go low on the salt. Well, they also don't have any nutritional <laughs> background and education. So again, assuming you're getting all processed stuff out of your life, then yes, you should be salting your foods. Okay, so I hope this helps at least get you thinking about some ideas. Keep it simple, keep it sustainable, keep it repeatable. Show up consistently. You don't have to have, you know, five stars from everybody, but should it be tasty? Should it be like, oh, that was good. Yeah, it was good. I mean, yeah, once a month is good for that meal or whatever. We, we want to, as the, the primary food providers of the household, we want to be able to nourish more than wow. And I hope you will say that with me and feel that. We want to be able to nourish more than wow. It is not your job to be Pinterest level of praise every single day. It is your job to provide the health nourishment that your family and your body need. We can all do a little bit better. We can all try a little bit harder. So I hope this helps us and that we'll recommit. And, and remember, we're not shooting for perfection here. We're just trying to be a little bit better. So no shame. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Okay. If you do want a little bit more set in stone recipes, I do have my all new low carb recipe book out. You can grab it at powerfoodslifestyle.com. There is a link in the show notes if you'd like to go directly there. And yeah, it's awesome. It's literally what I serve my family, what I make in its simplicity. It's repeatable ingredients. I don't believe in buying an ingredient that you're just going to use once and sit in the cupboard and see it again in two years when you clean out your cupboards. Hopefully you clean out your cupboards more than that. <laughs> I hope this is helpful to you, powerfoodslifestyle.com, to get my new recipe book, which is digital only, my new six-week low-carb program, and which is digital as well, and then my all-new paperback book, which is low-carb for the busy, tired, aching, and overwhelmed. I hope you enjoy it. I put a lot of heart into it. It was my project during COVID to write this book, this program, and this recipe book for you. I'm grateful to be sharing these things with you. Please pass this on to somebody that you know, somebody who could benefit from it. I'm so grateful. I've received a few podcast reviews lately and really grateful for that. It does help other people to find this. I know so many of you have good intentions. You want to leave a review. So I'm just going to say, do it. Just take that two minutes, pause, unless you're driving and just go leave a review. I appreciate it. It helps me grow. It helps me share this with more people because guess what? Nobody pays me to do this. This is me and my heart. I love you. Have a wonderful day. Power your body. One meal, one workout, one day at a time.